Hello, and welcome to the University of Kansas Career Center's presentation on finding virtual internships. At the UCC, we help undergraduates, graduates, and alumni with major and career exploration, job searches, application documents, networking, interview preparation, and any other questions you might have that are related to careers. We are available to meet with you via phone, Zoom, or Skype, and in person. So to schedule an appointment, you can call the office at 785-864-3624 or request an appointment online through hirejayhawks.ku.edu. So let's get started talking about virtual internships. Today, we're going to discuss virtual internships, specifically what they are, why they matter, how you can find them, and how to apply for them. First, a few slides about internships in general. You've probably heard that internships are a great way for students to use skills and knowledge from their classes in a real world setting, where they can also develop additional skills, gain much needed work experience for your resume, uh, learn about different opportunities and in your field of interest, and to develop connections with professionals. Internship experience, when combined with your education, will help you get that first professional role out of college. Because according to student surveys, the job offer rate after graduation is strongly tied to internship experience. So what you see on this slide is data from our most recent destination survey of KU graduates. 75% of students that had an internship reported that they were employed full time uh, compared to 49.5% that did not have an internship. Uh, nationwide, according to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, for the class of 2019, the job offer rate was reported 13.8% higher for college um, graduates that did have internship experience than those who did not have internship experience, close to 58% versus about 44%. And with this most recent changes in our, our world and its economy, where more companies are being forced to embrace working remotely, there are more online internship opportunities available for college students. And virtual internships have many of the same benefits of the traditional in-person internship, because you will be able to complete projects, collaborate with others, receive support from a supervisor, learn some of the same skills, and get perspectives on the company and the industry itself. But where virtual internships might offer additional benefits are that they may offer you more flexibility and open up opportunities in other geographic locations than where you're located without having to relocate or commute and work at times that, that fit with your schedule. So for example, relocating or commuting for an internship can be financially or logistically difficult, if not impossible. Um, a virtual internship allows you an opportunity to work for employers both locally and nationally and even internationally outside the United States. Since there's no commute, you're saving time and money on that aspect of the work. And since the assignments are often project based, you might have some flexibility to complete them at the time that works best with any other commitments you might have. And you can do this all from within your home or really from anywhere. Additionally, since you're not in a physical office, you need to be able to prioritize, show initiative, stay motivated, exercise good time management skills, and solve problems to complete these projects. And they also require clear and consistent communication using Zoom, Skype, phone, email, other sorts of project management uh, software. All of that is really critical during um, remote work. And all of those are skills that can be really valuable to future employers. Additionally, if you are working with interns or professionals um, from outside your geographic area, whether that's from other states in the US or from international areas, you're building really valuable professional networks and gaining in cross-cultural competence. And, you know, additionally, at a time when a lot of in-person internship opportunities are, are not as available as they once were, virtual internships can be a great way to get experience, to use your skills, and to enhance your resume to make yourself competitive in the job market. 
many virtual internships are paid, so it can be an opportunity to generate income. That's not across the board. There are unpaid virtual internships as well, but if you need that money, this is a way to, to start looking for it. So if we've convinced you of the benefits of virtual internships, your next big question is probably, okay, great, how do I find a virtual internship? And coming up next, we'll review some strategies and resources. So I wanna start by listing a few resources that are KU specific. Uh, the University Career Center team compiled some resources earlier this year on our website, Career ku.edu that are sort of specific to, to looking for work and gaining experience during the time of COVID-19. And if you go to that website, there will be headers labeled gain experience and search for jobs and internships. Under these headers, you can view tips on how to clarify your job search targets, update your LinkedIn profile, assess fraudulent opportunities, and access links for remote freelance work and internships. Additionally, HireJayhawks.com or HireJayhawks.ku.edu is a job database where employers will post opportunities specifically for KU students and alumni. And you can search positions by position type, which includes the type remote virtual work. So I'm going to navigate away from this PowerPoint for a minute and pull up the HireJayhawks.com site. When you go to HireJayhawks.com, it redirects to HireJayhawks.ku.edu. You can also type this in directly. And the page will ask you what kind of user you are. You wanna select that you're a student and then log in using your KU online ID and password, the single sign-on that you use on many other KU sites. And I'm already logged in as a student, so I'm gonna pull that up. And the home page will list several suggestions for your major and upcoming events that may be of interest to you. To find positions, you wanna come over here to the Find Jobs and Internships tab. And to find remote or virtual opportunities, you wanna to go to All Position Types. And once that's pulled up, under Position Type, you would select down here at the bottom, remote virtual and hit apply, which will show you that there are currently 27 results that are listed as being remote virtual jobs. And you can see what's currently available. You can then click on the job to review descriptions and check out application instructions, as for example, with this copywriter intern opportunity. If you want to receive notifications about future remote or virtual jobs, you can go back to that main search place. And because you've selected only one criteria, if you hit create job alert, the email system will then start reaching out to you on a, on a rolling basis with any new jobs that are posted that meet that criteria. And you can also modify how often you receive notifications about these jobs. So instead of weekly, you could set it to be daily. If you wanna view all internships that are available, you would deselect this by hitting clear and then apply. And then under the position type, you would hit internships, apprentices, or co-ops and click apply. This shows that there are about 135 internship opportunities listed, and you can further sort these by industry, by the type of job function, or by geographical location if you are open to working in person at this time. And if you have any questions about any of these resources, please feel free to schedule an appointment with a career coach. And now I'm going to return to the PowerPoint. Another website that may be of interest to you is Parker Dewey. Parker Dewey is a platform for connecting students with employers who have short-term, excuse me, short-term projects, what might be called micro-internships. These projects are paid, they are posted year-round, and they usually take between five and 40 hours to complete. 
micro internships are similar to regular internships and in that they provide you an opportunity to demonstrate your skills, explore different career paths, build connections, and gain work experience. Um, some of the clients are for projects that are in Fortune 100 companies. Others are startups. So it really varies. And the types of projects include assignments in sales, marketing, technology, HR, finance. And Parker Dewey has a web page where University of Kansas students can create an account. It's the link at the bottom of this slide, which is http colon slash slash info dot Parker Dewey dot com slash Kansas. Recent KU graduate Zachary Katava completed a number of projects through Parker Dewey for various clients in donor search researches, uh, marketing research, industry research, and data analytics. And Zachary actually spoke to the UCC about this experience earlier in this year in a video titled Micro Internships with Zachary Katava. It's available on the KU Career YouTube channel, and I would highly encourage you to check it out. In addition to Parker Dewey, here are some other websites where you may be able to find remote internships. Uh, Way Up is a job site for college students and recent graduates where you can find remote internships under the internships category in the virtual category. And another site for internships, Chegg Internships, does have remote internships available as well that you can find by searching under the remote internships category. Um, and if you're interested in more public service roles, there are also internship opportunities with a flexible schedule with the federal government. These internships, however, are unpaid. So students commit for one academic year working 10 hours per week to a program called the Virtual Student Federal Service. Uh, it started as the Virtual Student Foreign Service with the US Department of State, and then it expanded to over 600 opportunities available at over 50 federal agencies, including the Indian Health Service, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the USDA, or uh, the EPA, Forest Service, Department of Education, National Park Service, uh, the FDA, and other agencies. The skills that they are, are looking for include things like foreign languages, writing skills, coding, data analysis, GIS, design, marketing, videography, and social media management. Uh, so students involved in this program receive mentoring and exposure to job opportunities within the US government. Uh, interns do have to be uh, US citizens, and interested candidates can apply for up to three discrete projects through USA Jobs every year in July. And even more remote internship opportunities are available through online job search tools like LinkedIn, Indeed, and Idealist. Um, and on these sites, you would either search for a remote internship or see if there's a specific category that would let you search for virtual internships. If you're not familiar with these sites, LinkedIn is a professional networking site that's really good for building a professional online image. You can also follow organizations to better understand their culture and be notified of any job postings that they may share. Indeed is sort of the biggest job search engine or compiler of job postings online. And on there, you just search for remote internship. And Idealist is another site that I think fewer people are aware of. It's essentially Indeed for nonprofit or public service opportunities because many current nonprofit opportunities are going to be online right now. And all of these websites are fantastic tools so, and since most internships in the fall of 2020 probably will be online, in addition to the resources that we've mentioned in these slides, you should also identify potential employers that you might be interested in and then take a look directly at the company website to see if they have opportunities listed there. On a, on a less positive note, you do want to be aware that online opportunities um, do tend to turn up a slightly higher number of job scams or fraudulent opportunities. And it's important to know the red flags while you're searching. And here are some common ones. You know, unusually high pay for the kind of work that you'll be doing. Grammatical or spelling errors in the job description, not one or two words, but significant ones. 
uh, the company name being misspelled or a really vague job description or one that has requirements that are so minimal that practically everyone would qualify for it. If the job requires upfront expenses from you, that may be a good sign that it's a scam. Or if the potential employer wants to deposit a check into your bank account right away, it, it has a, a strong chance of being a scam. Additionally, if you are asked for personal or financial information early in the application process, anything like social security number, date of birth, home address, credit card numbers, or bank account information, all of those can be signs. If you're offered a job without an interview or without a reference check, that may be a warning sign. And finally, if the company doesn't have any kind of online presence, that may also be a sign that it's a fraudulent opportunity. So if you are applying by emailing your resume to a company contact, make sure that you've researched the email address to establish that this contact is a legitimate one because scammers often use a personal email address, something at, at Gmail or Yahoo or another, another um, large site, or create an email address that only resembles company contact information but doesn't exactly match it. There might be an added letter or a swapped letter within an email name, which can often be hard to notice if you're just glancing at it. So one way to guard against that is to copy the last part of the email address after the at to see if there is a corresponding website and then check the website to see if this, the site itself is legitimate. Notice if there are significant spelling or grammatical errors, if the design looks really poor overall. Is there a phone number that you can call? Is there a physical address listed? And does that physical address correspond on, say, Google Maps with where it says that it's located? Additionally, Google the company name. Consider calling the company to verify that the recruiter listed actually exists. Um, and some common scams will include things like secret shopping, general office work, product testing, reshipping, or processing rebates. You want to make sure that you're not sharing any personal or financial information via email or chat. And lastly, a couple of good ideas are to search the Better Business Bureau and the Federal Trade Commission websites to verify any listed company information. And search the company name in a search engine along with the word scam, because you really may turn up something just from that last simple step. So you've done all that work, you've found an opportunity, you've verified that the company is legitimate, and now it's time to apply. So for applications, you're going to want to have a resume handy and ready to go, because most positions will require a resume and possibly a cover letter. A cover letter is essentially a narrative to accompany your resume that elaborates on the experience that you've listed and demonstrates how it applies to the internship or the company. If you'd like to get assistance with either your resume or your cover letter, you can reach out to the University Career Center to schedule an appointment. You can also get um, feedback on your resume by submitting it for review on the UCC website through its Dropbox function. But remember, resumes get you to the interview phase. In order to get the job past the interview, you also need to brush up on your interview skills, do some industry research, uh, and practice for the interview. One thing that you might consider is scheduling a mock interview with a UCC staff member to receive feedback on your interviewing technique and tips on how you can improve. And some tips for the process. Look, a job search can be really stressful, and right now it can be even more so. This can take some time, so it's a good idea to start early and think of it as an ongoing process rather than as something you're going to do once and then be done with. Additionally, make sure that you keep your network updated on what you're looking for and seek insight from other people that you know, whether that's professors that you've worked with, KU staff, UCC staff, um, and any students, friends, coworkers that you have. Um, let them know what you're looking for and make sure that you're attending virtual networking events as well. The UCC will be hosting some of those this year. Um, after interviews, you want to make sure that you are responding to employers promptly and that you are sending thank you emails, letting them know that you enjoyed the, the chance to talk to them 
and that you hope to, to hear from them about next steps in the process. And lastly, if you're not getting your preferred opportunity, if what you want is just maybe not coming through at the moment, make sure that you have a plan B and a plan C that you can be working on simultaneously so you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak. For example, this is a sample career plan for someone who has created plans A, B, and C. So on this current slide, you see three separate job search plans that all are within the broad field of environmental studies. So plan A, the light blue circle on the top left, focuses on working in public relations for an environmental nonprofit. Plan B, the orange circle in the bottom middle, is targeted towards an internship with a state agency. And plan C, the dark blue circle at the top right, lays out steps to pursue a job as a brand management intern for an outdoor clothing line. Now you might notice that these job targets do share things in common beyond being in the broad field of environmental studies. Plans A and B are both focused on public sector work in a, a nonprofit and a state agency respectively, while plans A and C are both focused on marketing and public relations. And while the steps to support each plan are distinct, they draw on common themes. They are researching industry information and opportunities, getting to know people who work in the field, and gaining relevant experience prior to applying. So that sums up our presentation on the virtual internship search. We in the UCC are happy to help you build a, a dedicated internship search plan that is tailored to your interests and your needs. So please don't hesitate to reach out. You can schedule an appointment on hirejhawks.com or via phone at 785-864-3624. Thank you for attending this presentation and we hope to hear from you soon.